What's up guys? Uh, Steve, North Country Forge. Um, finally getting around to doing the 100 sub video show. We're going to make paper towel holder. I've seen anybody do one of these yet, so slide your paper towel in there, put your pin in. So, yeah. Smash some freaking metal and uh, I'll give you guys, I'll let you guys know when this could be yours. Alright. See you at the forge? Or the anvil? One of the two. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Jesus. Okay, guys. Inch by eighth inch flat stock, 24 inches long, 10 and a half inch. 24 inch piece mark inch, 3 inch, 6 inch, 9 inch. On the other end of it come in inch and then 3 inches. On your 10 and a half inch piece come in inch, 3 inch, and on the other side you're going to come in 2 inch. You do use a dot in the center, but we're not putting that in line it up after we get that after we get it ready to end. So, uh, let's get her in the fire okay on the side that you have the inch three six and nine you're gonna with the center punch marks facing up at you you're gonna start to fishtail the very end of the bar Fish tailed as much as you want. I usually do basically about like that. The next heat, we're gonna scroll it away from the center part, the center punch marks. Scroll it away up to the edge. Let's get her heated up again. Okay, start your scroll down. Keep it even. Start to roll it over. If you need more heat, get more heat. Inch mark is still back in here. Yeah, so we need some more heat. Roll it over some more. Okay, continue your scroll over. Straighten it out if it starts to bend on you a little bit. Make sure your fish tail is somewhat even. It's not going to be perfect. Pretty much up to our center punch mark. You can see it right in there. Just scroll it over. Something like that. We're going to get it back in the heat. And when we come back, we're going to take this scroll at your 2 inch mark. So you'll put your, or your 3 inch mark. You'll put your 3 inch mark down and we're going to bend it over. Not a sharp 90. It's going to have a uh, kind of a nice natural curve to it when you bend it over. Okay, find your three inch mark, set it on there. So pull off your scroll, find your three inch mark, right at the edge of the anvil, just past the mark is what I do, and you hit your scroll back something like that you can go back as far as you want I tend to leave it pretty close to that um, 
Yeah, pretty close in there. You see it's just got that nice little natural scroll to it. Don't worry about it if it's kicked. You can fix that in the vise afterwards. Um, yeah, let's get back in the fire and we're going to come back to... So get her back in the fire. We're going to come back to our 9 inch and we're going to throw another 90 in it. This one will be a sharper 90. Okay, find your 9 inch. Your 9 inch mark. Of course, I can't see it. Okay, you find your 9 inch mark. We're going to set her over. Same thing. Just, just past on the side of your mark, center mark down. Start setting it down. Right on your center mark. Get some more heat if you need to. Anvil somewhat cold, so it's sucking the heat right out of it. Okay. Make this a nice sharp, nice sharp bend. Back up. Run or something like that. What I normally do on these is I usually chamfer the edges. This gives it a nice old look. I forgot to on this, so it is what it is. You can always add some marks up in here, but I usually put them on the ends. It just makes it look good. Now we're going to come back, when we come back from the fire, we're going to work on the other end. Okay, so on this end, we're going to chamfer your edge down on the other side. out to the way you want it. Now when we come back with it facing down, we're going to scroll it down to your one inch mark. Your one inch mark's on the inside this time. Good time to get some more heat. Okay, continue your scroll. Lady it up a little bit if you need to. an eye on your one inch mark. I usually bring it down to the bottom of the scroll. Make sure it's even. That's it. Okay, so when we come back at our six inch mark, now you're going to punch a hole in there. 
Make sure it's centered, of course. Um, I am not going to uh, bore you with punching. We've all seen punching. Okay, on the side that uh, you have your one inch mark, same thing, fishtail it out. Get some more heat when we come back in. We're going to fishtail away from your dots, or scroll it away from your dots. Scroll it over. Same thing, we're going to scroll it over until we hit our one inch mark. it as even as you can. It's more heat when you need her. That's right about there, roughly there in. Make sure it's even, it's a little bit off. Okay, so now when we come back out, now we're gonna bend it at the three inch mark down, just like we did the other one. Find your three inch mark. Make sure you pull off your scroll. Find your three inch mark. Three inch mark down. Set it down the same way we did the first one. Just kind of let it do its thing, but you don't want it to bend way back here. Make sure you're still on your three inch mark. It's not a hard 90 or a hard corner. Just like, just like the other one. Now when we come back out, we're going with our two inch mark on the other end. And we're just gonna get a slight, slight angle on the very end of it. Okay, with your dots up. or uh, fishtail on you. Keep it pretty crisp. Okay, now is a good time to uh, chamfer your edges if you're doing so. I chamfered the edges on the long, on the first piece because I forgot to do it before I bent that over, so I'm not doing it on the front of this one. But I will chamfer this side. My old steel will chamfer good cold. I've done it. I usually do it cold before I even start the whole project. So this is what we have so far. Now, 
when we come back out of the fire at our two inch mark, we're gonna put our mark, our center punch marks down and we're gonna fold it over hard. It's gonna be a nice, uh, fairly sharp corner. inch mark over the edge of the anvil I go just on the side of my dot give it a set down try and get it right on your dot This is what you should have. It's the top half. So now, let this piece cool down for a minute. If you want, you can be a dumbass like me and try and line all this up all the time. Now, what I like to do. I'll line them up just like so just to uh, see where my line's going to end up and to make sure that the scrolls are lining up. See how my scrolls aren't lining up. This one has a touch more of a bend so I'm just going to bend it back out a little bit just to get it somewhat even. Doesn't have to be super hot, but I will just tap it here a little bit. It brings it back out. This way you can get it as close as you can. May not end up perfect. Drop forge it a couple times if you need to. Usually helps. The ends are lining up a little bit, a little bit better piece is going to end up here anyway, so your hole to be. Get your center punch out. Give yourself a center punch. Now when we come back, we're going to punch it and drift it. I'm going to save you the boring part of punching and drifting, so I'll be back. Okay, so drifted out quarter inch. So the next step in this, uh, if you want to add your touch mark, add that at some point in. I usually put mine, I usually put mine right in the front here somewhere uh, down in the center of it. So, the next step, so the next step, we're going to center punch two marks in here, two marks on this end for rivets to hold this together. So, this is the way I do it. You got a better way, go for it. This is just how I do it. punch and drift the holes just fine this way if if this bends in the way do it beforehand I just I like to do it this way part of the reason I do it this way if this bend ends off your dot just a little bit you've already got that punched in you're gonna have a heck of a time getting that punched out and getting your rivet in. Um, I think it looks better with the rivets kind of more centered anyway. So, but 
you're making the project, it's your project, do it how you want to do it. This is just a uh, way to get you going, an idea of how, how to do them. This is how I do them. So when you come back, I'll have these two holes punched. All right. They're drifted, punched and drifted. Now what I do is I take a little chisel. Put some little chisel marks in there. So it helps hold the rivet and keep the rivet from moving. It uh, holds the whole thing together a lot better. It gives that rivet something to sink into when you uh, place your rivet. See them or not, but there's the little rivet marks. So when we come back, we'll uh, start putting this together. Okay, so from your three your three inch mark on the top of this, you're gonna set just hit the dot and you're gonna transfer your holes over to there. So get your center punch out punch your holes. Make sure it's good and lined up. Use a marker first if you want. I just generally do this. Get a center punched. Make sure it's lined up. You give it a light center punch mark. You can readjust if it's off a little bit. Make sure everything lines up good. Doesn't look too bad, but I think my one hole is off just a little bit. My one mark. Give it a late center punch mark, it allows you to redo it. It'll have an awful mess. Alright. So punch these holes and then when I come back, punch and drift, uh, the rivets I make are 3 16 So when uh, when I get see, get these punched and drifted, we'll come back and we'll uh, rivet this together. All right, my rivets are already made. Now we're going to start setting them. It's got to be up against the wall, so got to make sure that that one's pretty flush on the back. back and we'll set the other rivet. Alright, so I forgot to turn the camera back on, but I finished up the rivets. It's all together. Um, take it to the vise if it needs to be straightened, a bending fork, um, get everything in line. It, you can bend it cold, bends really easy, so get it lined up the way you want it. When we come back, we'll uh, be making our uh, pen. Okay, 18 inches of quarter inch round stock. We're going to put a roughly four inch taper on one end and give it a scroll. And we're going to put a short one taper on the other end. Okay, we're 
we're starting with a four inch, roughly four inch taper. So apparently right here I forgot to uh, turn the camera back on and so you can see how I did the pen but I forgot to show it. Sorry. Alright guys, here she is. The old pen in her. On the wall like that. One important thing I forgot. Don't forget to drill or to uh, drill or punch and drift a couple holes for screws. I almost forgot about it. Anyway, take the old paper towel, set it in there. Maybe. Pin down through. Nice messy roll, but that's it. Things on the wall like that. It's so easy a caveman can do it. Hashtag not sponsored by Geico. Anyway, ow! Chuck paper towels in the water. Well, that's it. Done. Uh, so, it's my 100 sub giveaway. Finally getting to do it. Um, I'm going to leave it open to everybody over here, over across the pond. Uh, if you're across the pond, I may ask you to help me with uh, shipping. I've never shipped anything across, but I'll see what it costs if you win, and we'll go from there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this, today's Friday, I'm going to get it loaded up tonight. Um, I think I will leave it open until noon on Sunday. So pretty much all you have to do is comment on this video. You have till noon on Sunday. And let's see. You need to comment. Hmm. What should we have you comment? You have to comment. I can't find my blasted paper towel roll. If I had a paper towel holder, I would know where it is. That's that. Comment that exact words and sometime Sunday night or Sunday afternoon I'll figure out a time let everybody know and I'll do the old your name is in a hat and draw a name out that's the way I'm doing it so anyway thanks for watching like subscribe whatever else we do uh, and smash some freaking metal Later.